The adventure began on the first day in April. We packed up all our stuff and moved it all into storage, leaving just the small pile of belongings on the floor for each of us. His pile, her pile. Everything for a six-month trip had to fit in our Prius, and we had no plan B, not even a car top carrier. In my pile, I chose to bring my scanner and laptop, hiking and camping gear, and about one-tenth of my painting supplies. I also brought my favorite slippers, my fiddle, and a couple candles that have especially nice smells. Ben's space allotment was mostly consumed by a cooler full of frozen pork and full-fat butter because he really likes good local meat and dairy. So with our Prius full of painting supplies and pork, we took off for the southernmost Appalachians. After almost a year of planning, booking accommodations, and securing funding and a publisher for my book project, it felt incredible to have everything we needed in the back of our car. We made it into our rental cabin by evening, a last minute lucky find after our previously booked accommodations fell through the week before. Our cabin for this first month is a small renovated timber frame in the heart of Nanahala National Forest in North Carolina, an expansive, awesome forest of over 530,000 acres. My first couple of hikes were on sections of the 110 mile Bartram Trail, which runs right near where we're staying. William Bartram was a 1700s naturalist and artist who journeyed through the American Southeast, collecting specimens and writing and illustrating what he saw along the way. From this home base in Western North Carolina, we've gone out and hiked in lots of places in neighboring states. On our first weekend here, we camped in Talladega National Forest in Northern Alabama, the highest point in Alabama and the official start of the Appalachian Mountain Range. There's a cool watchtower atop the highest point, and one morning we carried our breakfast and coffee supplies up to the top to have breakfast with a view. On a hike in that same forest, I watched a green anole turn from a dark brown to bright green as she leapt off a tree branch to capture and gruesomely devour a large beetle. Green anoles change color based on their mood and temperature, and it was super cool to witness the striking transformation. Another hiking trip led us to the highest point in Georgia, Brasstown Bald. It was a foggy day, so we couldn't see a single thing from the top, but we enjoyed poking around the forest and observing all the snails that came out to party on the cool, misty day. This past weekend, we ventured out to the Tennessee side of Great Smoky Mountains National Park, where I was actually the artist in residence in June of 2018. But I'd never seen the park in spring, and I was enamored by the huge numbers and diversity of wildflowers that we were met with as we hiked up to Mount Leconte. Trillium of all kinds, showy orchid, trout lily, and my favorite tiny flowers, bluets, and spring beauties were among the sea of fresh spring blooms. Local folks have been kind enough to take me to some of their favorite spots to look for tiny creatures, and one of the most attention-grabbing finds was the stunningly perfect luna moth that I spotted in a lush meadow at an old mountain homestead site that's been long abandoned. Things have been great so far, but just like in normal life, there are always hardships. I had an eight-day migraine in the middle of the month, and during that time, I felt pretty discouraged that I couldn't fully enjoy the experience or be as productive in working on my book as I want it to be. And just like normal life, sometimes it's hard to paint, even when I'm feeling healthy. Painting sounds like the most relaxing activity to some people, but things take on a different tone when you have to put in eight hour days in order to make progress. And when you have a project that depends on your ability to stick with the task and produce dozens and dozens of highly detailed, biologically accurate paintings. I've heard some people say that creative jobs consist of just a tiny percent of inspiration and the rest is showing up in digging ditches, meaning putting in time to do monotonous labor that you know will eventually come together if you stick with it. But you just have to show up and keep digging those ditches, even when inspiration isn't enough to keep you going. Thankfully, audiobooks and the lovely Blue Ridge Mountain View out my window help keep my brain engaged while I work. This week is our last in this part of the Appalachians, and tomorrow we'll be venturing up to Mount Mitchell, the highest point in the Appalachian Mountain Range, to see what I can find there. Then we'll be heading north a little ways to our next home base for the month of May. You'll just have to follow along to see where that will be. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.